Hi, this is my tutorial for creating a high pass filter for GIMP. High pass filters are really great. They create a sharpness in an image that you can't get with your normal sharpening filters. It's a really dramatic effect and it's sort of reminiscent of a lot of sort of National Geographic work. So if you've ever wondered how they get that look, it's um, with a high pass filter you can really achieve a similar sort of thing. Now GIMP's a really great program and it has a lot of features but the high pass filter is unfortunately missing in those features. You can actually download plugins for it but I just find they don't offer you the same amount of control uh, over, over the effects of the filter as when you do it yourself. So this is how you do it yourself. I've taken a just a quick self portrait with my little automatic camera and I've actually already applied a couple of filters uh, so a denoise and a despeckle and also a selective Gaussian blur but just set to a really low level and that's just to remove a lot of this sort of artifacts um, and and noise that the these little automatic cameras can generate so you might want to do that yourself if you're using a camera like that so to create the filter the first step is just to, to create two copies of your base image and you invert the first one. Uh, what we're going to do in a moment is we're actually going to blend the two images we've just created 50-50. Now as they're almost they're basically the identical image just one's inverted uh, an inverted version of the other one uh, when we do this we just get a flat gray which I mean we could do that with a paint tool so um, obviously we're going to want to create some differentiation between the two images before we do that um, <clears throat> so what we need to do ironically considering the filter is one used to sharpen we have to do the opposite which is blur and I use a Gaussian blur almost for any application that I need to blur anything because um, it's just basically the best blur <laughs> um, so I've set this to a radius of 50. Um, obviously this is going to depend on two things. A, just your personal preference and B, the size of your image. Um, and the higher the radius you use, the more dramatic the end effect is going to be. So I've just decided 50 is a pretty good uh, level for this one. So hit OK and just let that one render and in a moment we can already go ahead and blend the two images so set it to a 50 and you can already see a lot of the details coming out here so uh, the interesting thing about it you'll notice straight away is where there's flat surfaces and not a lot of contrast and differentiation it's coming out really flat gray but where there is a big differentiation where there's contrast between two areas such as between the background and my hair that's where you can really see things coming out so we merge the two layers merge that down now a lot of people like to desaturate I don't think it's always necessary but I'll do it in this case anyway um, just find the one that you like the best often they uh, the different uh, types of desaturation will barely look any different but um, sometimes they will a bit and you just pick the one that you like the most I'll just pick an average here that'll be fine um, and we can already set the uh, blending mode to overlay here which is the best way to apply the filter um, as you can see it's not making a big difference yet you can sort of see a little bit uh, my pores are coming out a little bit more on my uh, cheek here and on my beautiful beautiful nose um, but we really want to make this effect as dramatic as possible and I might even go a little bit over the top just to just to give you an indication of what this filter can do so basically um, the best way to increase the effect of this is just go to brightness contrast and increase the contrast and you can just see already just all the little details coming out um, this is a great effect by the way for uh, for portraits and also also a lot of buildings work really well with this just to bring out all the little features in the buildings um, and if you want to get even more uh, involved in this, uh, you can adjust uh, the color levels as yeah color levels first of all. Um, 
especially if you don't like the brightness or the darkness but uh, this is just a more fine-tuned sort of way to um, to control the amount of detail that it brings out um, if you're confident with curves um, they tend to scare me a little bit still to be honest but you can uh, use these as well to add a bit more differentiation still uh, I might just leave it myself I'm pretty happy with the results as they are um, and that's basically just it really um, if you find that's still not enough you can always just copy the image and copy the layer with the filter in it that's probably already a bit too much as you can see um, a lot of the noise is coming out the noise I was talking about with the uh, automatic camera that's um, so I might delete that layer I created um, I think that looks quite good so now now you should be able to go ahead and take your fairly average looking images and make them worthy of National Geographic